Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Are you guys more awake? It's okay if you're not. Uh, my name is Tyler, and I'm the, the youth guy here. Uh, and uh, I also occasionally <laughs> do uh, some of the preaching as well. Uh, so that's what I'm here to do today. And uh, it's going to be really cool today. I'm really excited about today's uh, message. It's Today's message is going to be all about the Bible and how awesome the Bible is. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And God's Word, too. Uh, I guess before I get into it, I'll share kind of one thing that we were talking a little bit about at youth group last week. But just how incredible God's Word is. You know, us people, we have... We have our words. We can say stuff. And we kind of have like a limited scope on what our words are capable of. Um, they, they can be, you know, pretty uh, powerful, you could say. They can be detrimental to somebody. They could be uh, very encouraging and uplifting to someone. You know, they can make significant changes in the course of history. But God's words are on like a whole nother level. When he speaks... Who knows what could happen? You know, of course he has control over his power, but, you know, he used his words to speak the world into existence. When he spoke words, you know, light came into being, and, um, and then all the other things that followed it. And so how important is it when God speaks for us to pay attention and to listen and to think uh, thoughtfully and carefully about what he says. And what's really, really cool is he has given us the Bible. He's given us uh, his written word that's been passed on over all these years. And, and so the Bible is what we're going to be talking about uh, today and just how incredible it is. So uh, we are on our series right now uh, that we just started last week, which is an awesome series. It's titled God's Playlist for the Road. Psalms to take with you. Uh, so if you don't know, there is uh, a chapter in the Bible called uh, Psalms, or not a chapter, sorry, a book in the Bible called Psalms. And it's really interesting. I'm going to just give a little, a little bit of an overview of the Bible, a very basic, because we're going to be talking about, uh, I'll just give you maybe a bit of a warning. I'll probably say the word Bible a lot today. So uh, it's just it's just part of the it's part of the gig, um, but yeah. So the Bible is God's word for us. That uh, it's a collection. It's not really like one book. It's a collection of a lot of books over uh, roughly fifteen hundred years, and there's approximately forty different human authors who God worked through and inspired and used to write the Bible. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about this. It says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped, equipped for every good work. So, so God has this book that he's given us or this collection of book, uh, books and it's really interesting. It's really interesting because he, he gave us the Bible in a way as like this is the ultimate thing that you need to read to know how to live life, to know who he is, to have a relationship with him. Like these are all the, if, if we were to get like look up like, a, you know, the top, what are the top 40 books in the world of like, you know, how to live a good life or like how to get through life or how to be successful or how to have a relationship with God. Like, we could come up with a list of, like, books that a bunch of humans have written, but this is, like, what God has decided. He said, okay, here's, here are, here's the, the writings and the teachings and the songs and, and the poems and all of the literature that I have, have, have created for you guys and for me to learn about and to grow in our relationship with God with and to, um, and to, to follow. So, so one thing that's really cool is this, the, the book of Psalms, which we're going through, uh, 
in this series. And so the book of songs, uh, Psalms, it, we're calling it the play, God's playlist for the road because he chose to put 150 songs or psalms in the Bible. He thought, this is really important. Uh, and it, it tells us a little bit something about God, uh, which we'll be talking about more later. But he's creative and he's musical even. He's the one who came up with music. And so he thought, you know, if, if I'm going to give people what they need for life, one of the things he wanted for us was to have these psalms. Uh, and, and they're a collection of poems and songs and, and all kinds of things like that that Israel had and collected. So, yeah, that's, that's enough for our intro to the series, but uh, I'm going to just give you a, a, a quick like overview snapshot of where we're going to be going. So, uh, we're going to be talking about Psalm 119. That's our main focus today. Uh, we're going to start, I'm going to start with an overview of it uh, because it's actually really long. There's 176 verses. Whew, that's a lot of verses. Um, and it's actually the longest chapter in the Bible. Uh, so there you go. It's really long. So we're not going to go through it verse by verse. We're going to try and hit some of the key ones. So I'm going to give an overview, and then I'm going to focus in on a few key verses that I really wanted to uh, get across. And then I'm going to uh, talk about some of the things in the Bible that just excite me, because it's kind of what the psalm is about. It's, it's, it's a guy just like going on and on and on and on about how awesome the Bible is. So I'm going to go on a little bit of how awesome the Bible is. And then at the end, we'll get, I'll give some practical points. So that's just kind of an overview snapshot. But uh, let's get into it. So Psalm 119, uh, and I've titled the message, An Ode to the Bible. Because this, this chapter is like, it's an ode to the Bible. It's, it's crazy. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to start with just stuff about this psalm because... It's really interesting, and it's good to get into the, the literature about it. So you're going to have to get into this with me. So this is an overview of the book. There's, so like I said already, there's 176 verses. Um, and this is a wisdom psalm concerning the law of the Lord. It's a, so it's a alphabetic acrostic, which means that it's broken down into eight verses that are all based off of a letter of the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet. So it would start like with A, B, C. It's not those letters because they have different letters. But And how it, how it worked in the original Hebrew language is that the first eight verses would be a section and it would be A. And every line in that verse or in that section would start with the letter A. And so it was, that's how it was written out. And so there's, there's many of these, and they're going through all the different letters of the Hebrew alphabet. It's really unfortunate that we don't get to read it that way, because it, it, it wouldn't work to translate that like that into English. So we, we miss a little bit of the poetry, but um, the, the person who wrote it clearly had, you know, a sense of um, poetry, a sense of art, a sense of, um, like, wanting to do this in a creative way. So that, that's just really cool. So it's 176 verses long. Um, this psalm conveys the thought, the main thought, that the word of God contains everything people need to know. It's kind of his main point, is that the word of God contains everything that people need to know. If there's any situation in life, the thing to do is to go to the word of God in some way, shape, or form. And he gives... Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of them. Um, so to live a life with God on planet Earth, uh, you need the Word of God. Uh, it's a psalm that's written to God. So whoever's writing it, he, he wrote it. He actually is addressing it to God himself, which is really cool. It's really personal. And there's a lot of places in this psalm where you can see that personal relationship he has with him. Uh, now, this is really interesting because when we're reading through it, you're going to hear, like, the word 
law a lot or, or the word of God. Uh, the psalmist, the writer, he uses 10, there's 10 different words that represent in some way something that God has said. And I'm going to go over the different categories because it's, it's actually really fascinating because it gives an, uh, us a broader idea of what he thought was important. Uh, like, is it just certain things that God says that are important? Or, like, is it just the rules that are important? Or is he talking about, you know, what, is, what exactly is he talking about here? And uh, basically, the, the general rule of thumb is that he's talking about every aspect. Like, uh, we'll see. So I'm going to go over them. Uh, we've got the first uh, type of uh, part of God's word he addresses is the law, um, which is like instructions or revelation from God. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, he talks about statutes and precepts. So this is either kind of like a, something authoritative that God has said, or also just like general uh, rules for life. He talks about God's, God's ways. So the ways that God does things, the way that God thinks about things. So he thinks that's very important. Um, he talks about his precepts or orders. He talks about God's decrees. So that's like, I mean, a decree, that's like a really, like, that's coming with like a stamp of, like, uh, importance. So th those are very, God's decrees are important. His commands are important. His laws, and this is a different type of law, it's ordinances. So this is more like uh, in the book of Leviticus, if you guys know what that is, it would be more some of the formal things that he had laid out for the Jewish nation to follow. And he talks about how important those things are. Uh, and then uh, lastly, we've got, or there's, a, yeah, lastly we have word, God's word, just a word that God says. Not non-specific, just something that God says. And there's actually another uh, piece after that, which is kind of akin to an utterance. It's just something that God uttered, like something that he said. I kind of was thinking of it as like, even if God said something just like under his breath, and you could like hear him when you're walking by, you know how we, talk, we, we hear somebody maybe like just utter something under their breath? It's like, oh, grab hold of that. God, like God just, God just said something like, it's important. Like, what could it be? Uh, so it just gives us a picture of, of when he's talking about how important the Bible is and how important God's word is. He's, he's talking about it all. Everything that God says is important. Uh, yeah, so, so how important is just even one word that comes from God's uh, mouth? And the answer is very important. So... Uh, and his promises as well. Okay, we're going to get into some of the specific key verses now. Uh, and we're going to start with one that gives us a good general idea of this whole, uh, this whole psalm. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. I chose this as our key verse. Because it gives a good picture of, there's tons and tons of examples and specific places that we go. But again, I can't go to all of them because it's, it's so big. But the, the main kind of key here is that he's acknowledged that God, who made all of us, is good. And everything that God does is good. And so also, I mean, kind of what follows from that is everything that God tells us is good, and everything that God thinks is important for us to know would be good. And so he, he is, if God is good and everything he does is good, his conclusion is, teach me your decrees. Teach me what you know. Teach me what's important. Because if, if, if I go to you, if I go to you who, who is the source, if I go to God who is the source of all that is good, it takes out a whole bunch of guesswork, you know? Because uh, if I just go to myself or to other people, it's going to be like wandering around in the darkness. Like, I mean, 
I'm not good in the same way that God is good. Uh, we're not good in the same way that God is good. Sometimes when I, sometimes when I have, I am sort of more distant, distant from the Word of God. I find that I'll still like intuitively just trust my own, you know, thoughts about things or or intuition. But 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 when we when I do that, uh, at least from what I've observed, like if I'm not like anchoring myself to God's word, those start to be further from God's word because my natural gut, just me, Tyler, on my own, without God's influence in my life, without God's word, is not like the standard of good. It's, it's sinful and broken and skewed and twisted. And so I have to, I have to you know, go to God. And that's that's, you know, the first main point. God is good. Everything he does is good. And so we need to um, go to him and be taught by him. Okay, the next one. This is really, uh, this is a really famous one. Who has heard this verse before? Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Raise of hands. Who's heard that one? This one kind of is like the standout the one that everybody recognizes and remembers. So I want to talk about the imagery of this a little bit to get an idea. So he's talking about the word of God being a lamp, a lamp for my feet. Who uses a lamp on a regular basis? (laughs) Not as many people. Who uses a flashlight on their phone? Yeah? Okay, okay. Um... Let's, let's think of it first, though, in the imagery here. Okay, imagine you're in a time where uh, you didn't have electricity, and when it got dark outside, it got dark. There was no, there was no like, street, street lamps or, you know, you could have a fireplace and stuff. But if you wanted to, like, go get somewhere or do anything, really, other than just sleep... You needed to have a lamp so that you could see, and you're not going to get, you know, mauled by a wild animal or something. Has actually, has anybody ever been in the dark in the wilderness, like far from a place without light before? Were you scared at all? I, okay, I, I was scared. I had this one time, I was, I was hammocking about an hour away from uh, the camp that I was working at, and there's cougars on this like, there's actually, like, a decent amount of cougars in the area. So it's not, like, just, oh, it might be a rare sighting. Like, we, had, we have had them, like, come up to the camp, and you can hear them. So I was, like, just enjoying my time out there. I was watching the sunset, and there was, like, a thunderstorm way off in the distance with the su- sunset. But, like, I was in nice weather. And so I was, like, this is so cool. I'm, like, with my hammock. And then just in the blink of an eye, it was, like, pitch black outside. And I had about, like, an hour to get back on this, like, trail. And I didn't have a light. I might have had, uh, no, luckily I did have a light. But it was very, like, dim still. I I don't know. I would have been lost if I didn't have that light. Um, But so I got my my flashlight, and I was just, like, running back. And I was making lots of noise, too. So I, what I did is I decided I'm just going to call. I was, like, quite scared because I was, like, a cougar could could get me. So, um... I called, I called my friend, and I was like, hey, man, I'm, like, kind of an hour out, and I'm kind of in, like, wilderness territory, and it's, like, nighttime. Not the best idea. So I'm just going to, like, talk to you loudly on this phone for the next 45 minutes to ease my nerves and also, you know, to scare off any wildlife. Anyways, I got home safe. But when you're in the dark, another good example is if you've ever been, like, caving in, in pitch dark. It's like crazy. You, you can't see anything. Um, yeah. So what does that mean? Let's try to think about what does that mean for our, us in our lives? What would it mean to be in the dark? What's the difference in that scenario where it's like it's pitch black outside? What's the difference between having a lamp and lighting up the area around you and not having the lamp? How big of a difference is that? It's huge. It's a huge difference. It's like if you have the lamp, you can, you can like, live. You can do stuff. 
I mean, you could pretty much do anything that you normally would be able to do in the daytime. You just got to bring the lamp with you, and it's going to show you where to go. You're going to be able to not trip on things. You're going to be able to, and, and so for in our lives, what's that, what's that mean? It, it means when we encounter problems or things that we're stuck on that we don't understand, if we just go without God's word and we just try to do it ourselves, we're just kind of guessing. We're, 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 we're not able to really figure out the right way to go even though we often think we can. I mean, we, we kind of have been trying to figure it out on our own from the beginning of time. It's kind of part of our pride. But having God's lamp, having his word, it makes all the difference. Uh, when you carry God's word with you, it's like it illuminates your whole life. It's like, and, and what, one thing that I wanted us to think about when I was thinking about this uh, verse it's, it's also very personal. Um, there's a lot of light and dark analogies in the Bible. Uh, and for instance, I mean, one of the first things that God did with his word, actually, was he made, what was the first thing that God, the record, first recorded thing that God said? Does anybody know? Shout it out. Let there be light. In a, so in a real sense, God's word is actually light which is cool to think about. But, uh, but this is very personal. He's, he's saying, your word is a lamp for my feet, for my life. When I get to a spot where I'm scared and I don't know what to do, your word is going to let me know that I can take a step forward because I can see, you know, one step forward. I, I can't necessarily see 20 feet forward, but I can see the next step. And, and so God, that's, what's, that's what God's word is like for each one of us. It's not, just, uh, it's not just a random light. It's a light for you. It's guidance for you. And it's true. It's remarkably true how specific and personal God's word can be if, you're opening, if you open yourself to hear from him. Uh, there's a lot of times where we share God stories in youth group, and I mean, just okay. I know I've been I've been studying this, and I've been thinking about how cool God's word is, and I've been like thinking about it. And then, what do you know? Last night, I'm gonna I'm going to bed after after I finish preparing, and I was like, I'll open my Bible my Bible app to see the verse of the day, and it was like. It was like a perfectly fitting verse for something that I had been like struggling with in my own mind with the, with the sermon. And it was just like, it was mind blowing. I was like, I'm, I'm teaching about this and God is like, here you go. Here you go. I'm, I'm showing you that it's true. It's real. Like this is, this is guidance for you, Tyler. And, and it's, it's unbelievable. So let, let's be let's be open to it. Let's be going to God's word. Okay, next up we have, and oh, oh, we already got that one. God said, "Let there be light." Okay, so uh, now there's another example. We talked about like light and darkness. It's kind of abstract a little bit. He's gonna put it in more uh, blatant terms here. He says, "If your law had not been my delight." I would have perished in my affliction. What does perished mean? I mean, died or, or just being completely and utterly destroyed. He says, if, if I had been, not been delighting in God's word throughout my life, I would have perished. I would have been crushed beyond repair. This is just somebody who lived life and he had the he had the bible and continually if you read through this again and again and again he keeps on saying i just i need the word of god i need to cling on to this because if not i'm going to be crushed and the next uh you can see how grateful he is for it in the next verse he says i will never forget your precepts for by them you have preserved my life 
he just, he so much has this, uh, this love for God's word and this care for God's word that he just, he has, he has to sing about it. He has to make a poem about it. A really, really long poem about it, about how important God's word is in his life. And you know what? One of the cool things is, is that we don't even know who this person is. They don't have a name. They're not, they don't, they haven't written anything else uh, in the Bible as far as we know. This was just somebody thousands of years ago who was trying to get through life and they found God and they found his word and they clung to it. And they followed it, and they, they memorized it, and they meditated on it, and uh, they sang about it. So, uh, God's word makes all the difference. This is a point you can write down if you would like. God's word makes all the difference. And then uh, a sub point for it is, the, or another point is, uh, the way to get through life is to cling to God's word in every moment. That's the way to get through life. Cling to God's word in every moment. Also, it's the difference between light and dark and life and death. Uh, Jesus talks about also how uh, we cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God's mouth. Okay, so that's kind of our, those are, our, that wraps up our key verses section, because uh, there's, there's tons more, and I can't go into them all as much as I would like to, uh, but we're going to uh, go on to just a little, a few pieces, uh, let's see, we'll go through our slides here. Okay, we'll just we'll just hold it there. Yeah, so I hope you guys are encouraged by God's word so far. One thing that I was thinking about when I first read this is to be honest, the first time I read through this, I kind of got bored and I I was like, wow, he's just repeating the same thing over and over again. And and, uh, and I was a little bit convicted because he came to these spots where he, uh, he says like this, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. And I thought, do I delight in God's word? And I, I think my answer was in that moment was no, not right now. Not in that moment I wasn't. And I probably am neglecting God's word for all the other things that I could be doing. Um, and then he says this, my soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. And then I was like, well, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you got me on that one. I, I'm not consumed with longing for God's word all the time, but this guy was, and uh, it's inspiring to me because there's something there and you can see it. He talks about it in so many different ways. He says, uh, God's word is more valuable to me than like all the riches that I could have. It's more valuable than that. And then he describes it another way. He says, it's sweeter to me than honey. And as I read through this, I just, just by reading uh, what he thought about it, what he had to say about God's word, how how much he cherished it, how much you could see that uh, all these situations he was trying to get through, that, that, that they were better because he was trusting in God's word, it started to change the way I thought about it. It started to help me get excited about it. It started to help me be more passionate about it. So ultimately, I mean, it would be awesome if you guys could read it uh, at some point, but... Okay, we're, we're getting close here. I'm going to just quickly give a few things in the Bible because we usually we have a story or an illustration or something like that. But uh, because this whole chapter is kind of an ode to the Bible, I wanted to just share a couple quick uh, parts of the Bible that I really like, that I think are really cool. Uh, 
And so we're going to roll into those. Uh, one part of the Bible that I really like is Job. Has anybody read the book of Job before? I, I have a love-hate relationship with Job, which I probably, I mean, I probably shouldn't ever say I have a re- hate relationship with uh, the Bible. But, but it's a really confusing book, and uh, it kind of gives a very unsettling answer. If you don't know the book of Job, it's, it's all about a, a man named Job and the crazy amount of, the, the astonishing amount of suffering that he goes through. And it's trying to answer the question, why is there suffering in the world? And why is it happening to me? Has anybody ever asked that question before? Why is there suffering? And it's this series of dialogues with all of his friends. And, you know, there's a lot of parts where it's like, oh, is that, you know, is that correct? I'm not really sure. Uh, Because it's just, it, it just, he just tells us the dialogue. And there's some, you know, some of the friends' ideas, they weren't actually very good ideas. And then, uh, some of Job's ideas were like, yeah, they could be right. And then Job, Job is going through so much suffering that he finally just wants to talk to God and ask. You know, kind of like how all of us want to ask, why, why all the suffering? Why, we've said it before, why all the bad stuff? And when, he finally, when God finally responds to him, he doesn't answer the question. He doesn't tell him why. And in some senses, I've thought about it often for myself. I think, like for me, it means also that he's not going to tell me why. Uh, The answer is that he tells Job who he is, and he, uh, he builds their relationship together. Job sees God, and he... Uh, gets closer to God, and he has this tight-knit relationship with God now. That's what Job comes out of all of this with, is a tight-knit relationship with God. And he's able to trust him and go forward with the rest of his life. He didn't get the answer to why is there suffering? Why did I go through all of this? God never tells him. It's fascinating. There's so many, it's so cool, the Bible. There's so many different genres and and types of things in the Bible. There's songs, there's, there's visions and prophecies that were written, you know, a long time, and then they're fulfilled later. Uh, there's history, there's law, there's drama, there's horror, there's, there's uh, murder. You know, it has it all. God has, like, orchestrated uh, this book for us that we get to read that has all of these different stories that we can look at, and we can... We can like look at them and we can pick them apart and, and see what it has for us. See what this story has for us. What can this, because there's a reason that it was here. Uh, like it, whatever uh, book of the Bible or chapter of the Bible or story that you're reading in the Bible, there's a reason it's there and there's always something that we can learn from it. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you know what makes it even more amazing? is that it's not just a story that's been written. It's actually real life that has happened through real people, with real accounts, written with real people. And so it's a real story. Uh, and, and God's orchestrated and, and worked in the lives of all these people, all these generations and he's collected it all, and he's put it all. He's like, think about the amount of care. How, how much attention to detail does God have? And concern and compassion and love for us. The Bible is not something that just showed up. It's something that he probably had thought of long before any of us were here, and he carefully pieced it together for me and for you, because he knew when we got here in life, we were going to need it. And so, yeah, I, I, I've been inspired, and I hope, I hope that you guys can, can find... Uh, the love and joy for the Bible and and see the importance of it. See the love that God poured into it. 
I won't go into uh, more parts of the Bible that I like right now for the sake of the ta- sake of time, but you can ask me later if you want. Um, it, but but ultimately, it's a it's a masterpiece. It's the yeah, and this this psalm is an ode to the Bible. Okay, so I'm gonna just come to some concluding points, some practicable practical things that we can draw from this. Uh, we're past that. Okay, one thing uh, that we can see in the Bible, and even just particularly in the Psalms, and the way that this uh, person wrote the Psalm, is that God is creative. He he has ideas. He um, he dreams things up. He 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 likes poetry. He likes singing. Even he's the one who came up with singing. I. I'm often very encouraged by uh, the singing that our worship team does and the, the singing that our, uh, our youth worship team does. Because uh, I've, been, I've been the youth director for uh, a while, and uh, there's some days where it's really hard. And especially in the first couple years when I was starting, it was hard pretty much every Friday night. Uh, and I remember... Just coming in and hearing uh, Zach, who's not here, and, and Thomas, and, and everybody else who was singing in the worship band. And that would just carry me through. It would just carry me through the whole first two hours of preparing for work and everybody coming. I'd have these songs in my heart just playing on repeat. And they would help a lot. And, and when I hear those songs now today, it, it, it helps a lot. And that's part of kind of uh, one of the themes of this is, is hopefully you can take some of these songs and bring them with you. But uh, yeah, so God is very creative. So if you have a gift of creativity or if you don't, if you think of something or you have an idea of something to draw or if you have a song in your heart to sing or, or an idea to share, do it. Put it out there. Because uh, this person was just a random person. And he decided that he wanted to write this song. And God used it to do incredible things. Imagine what we, we would be missing out on if he didn't, didn't follow that call. So if you have a creative gift or if you have a, uh, something to share, do it. Uh, another uh, practical thing uh, that, that we learn from... Uh, this, is that we can hide God's word in our heart so that we might not sin against him. Uh, We didn't go over the verse that's talking about this, but it's just a practical thing that we can get out of uh, the whole uh, chapter, is that we can use, uh, have God's word in our heart so that we don't sin against him. That's really important. Jesus, that's how Jesus defended against um, temptation and different things, was by having God's word in his heart. And then uh, hold on to God's word like a lamp, and carry it with you dearly wherever you go. Hold on to that lamp. Hold on to God's word. Um, It's so important. Okay. The last thing. Does everybody have a pen or paper or something that they can write something down on? Uh, Because I'm just going to quickly go through a couple sections uh, that are I, I summarized a little bit. And I would like, if you're willing, for you to maybe pick one that has, like, a headline that might be useful for you. And it'll give you, like, the, it'll, it's going to be one of the letters of the alphabet. And then you can go in later on your free time and, and read it. So if you want to get your phone or pen out or whatever, I'll just, I'll go through them. They're in no particular order. Uh, so it's something to take home with you. Teaching and direction. Uh, This is verses 33 to 40. It's kind of, if you feel, I guess what I was thinking in this one is if you feel like you need, like, direction or you feel like you don't really particularly know which way to go or or you need to learn something because you're lacking it, this is a good one for you. Take that one home, 33 to 34. Uh, God's steadiness and help in trial. If you need a reminder of how... Uh, steady and and 
faithful God is in the really hard times, this one would be, could be a good one for you. That's 89 to 91. Next up, we have the lamp, the lamp section, uh, which is more than just, I just read the first verse, so there's more to it than that. So if you're curious about what comes after the lamp, uh, you could go uh, verses 105 to 112. Just give a second to write it down. And then this one's a good one. It's kind of very specific. Feeling like you can't see God's promise being fulfilled. Like maybe you feel like there, there was something you were expecting that God was going to be a part of or, or working on with you. And it feels like you can't see him in it. Like he's just kind of dropped the ball. This guy felt like that too. And this is a good verse for that. So that's 81 to 88. And then purity. This is a really good one. Uh, purity for your mind, your heart. Uh, purity in, in uh, focusing ourselves on God and following him. Uh, that's verses 9 to 24. So if that's something you're interested, it's a great one, uh, 9 to 24. And I believe that's the last one. Yeah, so there it is, God's playlist for the road, uh, Psalms to take with you. I hopefully you took some of them with you. Uh, yeah, the, the word of God is very important, as, as I've already said, and uh, as uh, this psalm talks about. So, We'll maybe pray to close now, and we'll have the worship team come up, and then uh, we'll continue singing together.